Okay, let's continue. So I'm sorry for the abrupt ending. I didn't want the first part to be too long, so yeah, enough talking. Let's get on with the collection. You know the drill. All right, this one is Edge of Spider-Verse, Bleeding Edge. This is a mini series which includes uh, collects Edge of Spider-Verse, a 2023 series, issues one to four. I don't know if there's any other issues of these but this is a really cool comic if you love the spider-verse movies it's definitely we're we're checking out especially like all the different spider people because obviously lots of them are very different and you can lots of them even have different art styles like the first no not the like this is the first one it's this is a with has spider rex which is a dinosaur spider-man as well this one has a princess spider-man or spider woman rather named spinstress and it's drawn like an old disney movie and it looks really cool it doesn't look like a comic book at all and you have all these other ones like there's like a futuristic type one and it's it's such a cool comic like if you love spider-man if you want to see more characters like this is a great one to check out you don't need to really know anything about like as long as well you know the concept of what the spider verse is this is definitely a must read and here's in that this is the first edge of spider verse comic i got uh, but it's a standalone uh, mini series it's it's with spider gwen and this is a fantastic comic i read this um i got this like uh i think christmas 2021 i believe and that's a part of it is why i loved the the beginning of across the spider verse where it showed gwen's world because it reminded me so much of this comic like ju just the fact that it begins with her in a band and that her father is really struggling to find out that she's actually spider one and even just the look of it like like the color palettes and the pink and purple of all the backgrounds it really kind of shows her that she's in a unique world that's different from the main earth 616 spider-man that we all know and love and you even get some other spider people like you get the the spider uh like you get penny parker and spider or spider slash but you know the robot uh spider-man and it's it's a really good story and gwen's always a a really cool character and you always you get even get some kind of horror inspired stories of like of mutated spider monsters which i guess you have seen in some other spider-man stories like that one where he grows six arms and then he be, tries to cure himself because he is because his spider powers put him in danger. So there's definitely some influence from some old Spider-Man comics while also bringing in some new essence to the to the world. So it's really good, a really good comic. And if you love Spider-Gwen and the Spider-Verse movies, this is fantastic. I know I'm saying that a lot. I know I, I'm very much saying I love all these comics, but, you know. All right, this one's an interesting one spider-man bloodline this was written by jj abrams funny enough and yeah it's it's re a really good comic i think he really does have an i do love his movies i think he's a really good director and his love of sci-fi and such like it really translates well into a comic book i feel and you do get of course some of the avengers in there like Th there's thor and black widow and it's a it's a really neat story and if you love jj abrams and you're like a really huge fan of his work and but want to see something new to the table he would bring this is a good one to check out i mean some of the writing it's not the best i mean in terms of spider-man writing, but i still like it as is like lots of the you know love the relationship he has with mary jane some of the romance stuff it doesn't work all that great when it comes to the writing but when the action's there and the sci-fi elements jj abrams really has a knack for that and he nails it okay this is the last spider-man comic i have 
Spider Spider Man Back to Basics, which is the the first volume in the run of the 2018 Spider Man. Weirdly enough, for some reason, there's a typo on the back. It says Collecting Amazing Spider Man 2058 issues 1 to 5. Wait, what year is it? <laughs> it's a weird typo. And there's also a free comic book day uh, issue with Spider Man and Guardians of the Galaxy. So, yeah, it's a really neat modernized take on Spider-Man, and I do like it for that. Kind of like, it's not really like the Venom comics where they don't emphasize much Spider-Man. You, It basically feels like a traditional Spider-Man story, but written in the modern days, and it's so far, lots of the stories seem really good. I definitely want to pick up more of this, and I want to add more Spider-Man stuff. All right, this one, okay, it's a bit of a cheat because I'm in the middle of it. Uh, I actually just picked up this one recently. It's X-Men Ch uh, Children of the Atom, which collects the first 63 issues of the very first X-Men volume run. Like, from 1963 to 1966, it says. And yeah, so far, I'd say I appreciate these stories more than I like. No, I'd say I like them because... It is a good start to X-Men. If you really, if you don't know anything about X-Men and want to know the concept, this is a good one to check out. It really showcases Professor X's history with a bunch of mutants. And it starts off with a pretty small team. Because funny enough, with how many bajillion X-Men characters there are, it's like it started off with a pretty small roster. Like you just had Cyclops, Beast, Angel, Iceman, Jean Grey. It... And that was pretty much it. Like, you didn't really have anybody else. Like, Wolverine wasn't introduced yet. He wasn't introduced until Hulk comic. But uh, Storm wasn't there yet. Uh, Gambit and Rogue weren't there. Like, But it's so far, it's still pretty. I still need to finish this. But I guess for a start to X-Men, it's, it's not bad. I think it really does get you invested in the world. And it's very interesting. I'm going to have to finish I don't know. I'm like almost halfway done it, so I might finish it probably within the next month or two. Here's another X-Men one I got. I got this one last Christmas. It's the Dark Phoenix Saga, the one of the most famous arcs in X-Men. And yeah, like I do still love the Dark Phoenix movie, even though, yeah, it's not a straightforward adaptation of the story. It's more inspired by it, which I kind of understand because this, it's literally issues 129 to 137, so you kind of need to know a bit. In fact, I actually got this before I even got the Children of the Atom, so... And there's a lot of callbacks to like certain X-Men comics and even other Marvel comics, so it would be really hard to make a straightforward movie adaptation of this story. But what can I say about it? It's a great it's a great story about how Jean Grey has to struggle to turn evil and try and is she's very conflicted if she needs to is she's forced to join the Brotherhood of Mutants or if all the other X-Men are gonna turn against her. It's a fantastic story about being nervous about fighting one of your own and it's what else can i say about it? if you're an x-men fan well what am i even saying every x-men fan has probably has has this in their collection right. and this is the last x-men comic i have uh uncanny x-men x-men disassembled which is the 2018 a run of uncanny x-men and it's quite good you do have a good roster a lineup of x-men like you got bishop nightcrawler psylocke Jean gray storm x-23 because wolverine isn't in this one this was when x-23 was replacing him so you do get and it's a really good run and yeah a must read for anyone who considers themselves an x a true x-men fan yeah it's a good modern take on x-men without losing the charm of what makes it so good so yeah it's definitely a good one to pick up it's not bad for a first x-men comic even all right next one we have here is wolverine the end well 
I'm I'm pretty sure I've mentioned Wolverine is my favorite Marvel character, so I definitely had to get this, and it's an interesting comic. It's I guess it's not unlike Old Man Logan, which I I haven't re- read that story that storyline. I need to get that comic sometime, but it's kind of close about how Wolverine's aging and and he learns more about where he came from and his origins and it dives deep into him so it's a good story without it doesn't really feel like a traditional x-men story but it's cool if you just want to see some like wolverine action and you get more than enough all right and here's something you've probably been waiting for the Batman comics. Yeah, I only I only have four, though, which I know you guys are going to be like, what? But, yeah, as much as Batman's my favorite superhero, yeah, I don't have a heck of a lot of his comics, but I do got four great ones. There's Batman Year One, which is written by Frank Miller, who's a great comic book artist who you might know is the creator of Sin City, and... And 300 so he's definitely knows his game and this is an amazing comic it's it was one of the inspirations for the batman you know the matt reeves movie and just the style and look of it yeah i can definitely see why and this is a a fantastic looking comic like it might be of all the batman comics i have well aside from maybe the one i'll get to it probably has some of the best artwork like yeah, it does look kind of rough, but it's very noir-like, and that's what I love about Batman. And there is an animated movie based on this story, Batman Year One, and that movie is very good. It's very faithful to this comic, and why haven't I reviewed that one yet? I don't know, but Batman Year One is great. If you're a Batman fan, definitely read this one. Batman the Long Halloween, another fantastic story. I honestly, I think, I don't know, maybe I like this more than year one. Because, I mean, sure, the the comic book art isn't as, you know, interesting and noir-like. But it's a good detective story. Because one of my favorite aspects about Batman is his detective work. So, this is a fantastic story. I haven't seen the animated movie, uh, The Long Halloween, yet. But this is a amazing story if you love batman in his detective work while also showcasing his iconic villains it's i can't really i can't recommend this one enough and it's probably not a shock i got this one the dark knight returns which every comic book fan has this comic and i don't even know what more i can say about this comic everybody has said how good it was and yeah it's truly great and the two-part animated movie was really good, too, so... You know what? I'm not even going to bother with this. <laughs> and, of course, this might be my favorite comic book of all time. Like, I know I've, I've prayed, like, a bunch of it, but, no, this genuinely might be my favorite one of my collection. Batman the Killing Joke. <laughs> People have gone on and on, comic book fans, at least, of how great the story is. And this truly is a great story. I didn't mind the... I actually thought the animated movie that was based on this was pretty good. I know lots of people didn't like the whole Bat thing about the beginning was focusing on Batgirl, but I didn't mind it because, A, Barbara Gordon does tie it to the story later, and two, this comic is really short. Like, I'm not kidding. It's really short. Like, it's like... It's 53 pages. And yeah, if you're wondering, what's the rest? It's actually a a different, there's a different Joker comic and like a lot of artwork in it. So yeah, it's a 53-page story. Obviously, you can't make that a full like movie, but this comic is fantastic. I mean, Joker, he's not even my favorite comic book villain. He's my favorite villain of all time, and this definitely shows it. He has a really creative origin story. He's funny, he's scary, he's basically a lot of stuff you would want in a villain, and that's why I love him so much. This is a... You know what, I could literally talk about this comic all day, it's so good, but I gotta move on. (laughs) 
Sorry. All right, next one I got here is Suicide Squad Casualties of War. This is actually an entire run. It's a 12-issue run of Keith Giffen's Suicide Squad, which ran from 2001 to 2002, I believe. And it's pretty good. It kind of more focuses on like spy war type missions, not more, not really more so the, you know, DC com the big DC comics villains, and it doesn't really focus on like the world, the universe as much. But it's still a good story, and you got some, you know, you got Deadshot, of course you would, and you got Block, but I th no, uh, Bulldozer, that's what his name was. You Reactron. Major Disaster, Killer Frost, so it's a pretty good comic run. I mean, it's not my favorite of the Suicide Squad ones I have, but it's not bad. Alright. And this one, here we go, Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Avengers, which is the first volume of the 2013 Guardians of the Galaxy run, which came out a year before the first movie, and it's quite a good comic. I mean, it's not as you know, comic, obviously with just like a lot of superheroes nowadays, it's not as comical as the movie. Like, it's not very humorous, but I mean, it does kind of have some banter between the characters. But I mean, I still like the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie. I mean, then again, that was kind of more so a lot of it inspired by the Annihilation Conquest storyline in the 2008 run, which I do want to get both Annihilation stories and the 2008 run sometime, but yeah, this is a good story, and even Iron Man enjoyed the Guardians of the Galaxy in this one, so it's definitely cool seeing another character add to the team, and I don't think, uh, was Adam Warlock in this lineup? Hold on, let me, uh, no, it doesn't look like he was, so, but it, it's a good comic, I do want to check out the others sometime, so. I know one of the next volumes was about Jean Grey, I think, so that should be interesting. Alright, and here's, I know, what a surprise, some more Suicide Squad ones. I think you probably know I have this one already because of a April Fool's Day video I did. But I'll go, this is the very first run of Suicide Squad. Like, the very first in the 80s. Even though... Technically, the Suicide Squad were introduced in the 50s, but it wasn't about supervillains. It was about a group of scientists and explorers that went on deadly missions, hence why they were called the Suicide Squad. But, okay, this this run is spectacular. I don't have it all. I only have half the volumes, but if you want to get into Suicide Squad, I really recommend starting with this. It has, it's not very much like the movie, like, well, the first Suicide Squad movie was more inspired by the New 52 and uh, Suicide Squad comics, like the more modernized, you know, balls to the walls type stories. But this one, like, this wasn't a main inspiration for the second Suicide Squad movie, The Suicide Squad, which, because it's a more down to, these were more down to earth war stories with weird super disposable supervillains. Like, yeah, I know Deadshot and Captain Boomerang, they're A listers now, but think about it. Back then, nobody cared about them. Like, let's be real. Did most Batman fans in the 80s care about Deadshot? Like, exactly. So, yeah, I can't recommend this comic enough. It's it's incredibly good. Like, if you want to get into the Suicide Squad, or just the Suicide Squad comics in general, definitely pick that one up. It's fantastic. I really, I really hope Ostrander's run gets more love. Here's the next one, the Nightshade Odyssey. This one's also really good. And there's even one that's a crossover with the Doom Patrol, which, uh, hold on, where is it? Oh, it, this is it, this is it, yeah. Yeah, see? Doom Patrol and Suicide Squad. And yet there's, see, there's Robot Man, and there's, we yeah, Remember Weasel from the second Suicide Squad movie? He was in this specific comic. And as well as there's Hawk and there's the Thinker. And in this one, he didn't have the, you know, antenna in his head. He had a helmet, which is interesting and unique. He didn't have 
He didn't have the antenna, I think, until like the new 52 comics, I believe. But yeah, this comic is also really good, especially the Doom Patrol storyline. You do got to read if you're... I don't have any Doom Patrol comics, surprisingly, though, because I do really like the Doom Patrol. So I'm really hoping to get some kind of Doom Patrol comics at some point. And here's the next volume, Rogues. Definitely, probably, this, okay, maybe the tied with the next one for the largest one of this one. And here's the final one I have, the Janus Directive, which this was actually a big event, not just a Suicide Squad one, but it was also, a, they crossed over with another DC Comics special ops team called Checkmate. And even Peacemaker, hold on. Yeah, see, Peacemaker even was in these comics. He was he wasn't a part of the actual team. That's kind of a misconception the movie had. And yeah, Peacemaker in the comics is nothing like Peacemaker in the Suicide Squad or that god awful Peacemaker show. But I mean, I do like the Suicide Squad, but let's be real. Like John Cena's Peacemaker, he's nothing like the Peacemaker in the comics because all they got right is his costume and the fact that he kills. Even if it, he wants peace, no matter how much he's willing to kill. I swear, James Gunn just looked at the first Peacemaker comic and cover of the Charlton Comics run, and he just assumed everything about the character. But this is a great story if you want to see more military type DC comic stories. Like, I don't, I never read Checkmate, but maybe I might check it out sometime. Also, The Secret Six. I've heard, I've heard Gail Simone's run particularly is really good. Speaking of Peacemaker, I also have the Suicide Squad Case Files 1, which showcases a bunch of, lots of the members of Suicide Squad in the movies, and, like, this is the Peacemaker one, where he's with, he's with Vigilante, who's nothing like how he is in the constant The Peacemaker show, like, it's just, I know people tell me to give, I need, I got a battery warning, sorry. Sorry, like, Vigilante is supposed to be, you know, a troubled soul who, who constantly takes pains to make sure he doesn't kill anybody and he's, and he's suffering the loss of his wife and kids. He's not some loud, potentially mentally disabled kid It's who makes sex jokes. Like, if James Gunn can't get Vigilante right, why should I assume he can get Superman right? Or even the entire... DC universe right it's I'm sorry but I'm still not convinced James Gunn is gonna do justice for Superman or DC comic DC movies or whatever because Peacemaker was god awful I like the Suicide Squad Peacemaker just no but this is a good comic run and you even get you even get a little one cool one shot comic with Amanda Waller I know that seems kind of boring I know but it's actually pretty interesting. She goes on this mission on with a bunch of soldiers on this mountain, and it's kind of a shame this was a one shot because I actually would like to see more Amanda Waller. So, and even Bloodsport here, who's also nothing like how he's. I mean, okay, I liked Bloodsport in the Suicide Squad, but he wasn't exactly a good interpretation because here he's a mentally unstable Vietnam War draft evader. He's not a wisecracking assassin with a daughter. Like in the movie, like, but okay, all in all, this is definitely a really good collection of stories with a bunch of weird, disposable DC characters. So it's really good. If you liked the Suicide Squad movie, which I still do like it, but it's definitely worth the worth a read. All right, this is the second, the second one, Case Files Two, which I love the characters like Rat Catcher, Captain Boomerang. Harley Quinn, of course, uh, Savant, uh, Javelin, Blackguard, um, yeah, like, you get this one Harley Quinn comic, and, oh, and this is a really good, I absolutely love this image, the, 
this is an Alex Ross uh, picture of Harley Quinn Joker. I could, Alex Ross does some really good DC, particularly DC comics. His art's really good. But yeah, this is, this is a, a good collection of stories, and I'm definitely glad to have them both in my collection. This is a kind of a random selection. This is Suicide Squad, uh, their greatest shots, but it's just a random collection of miscellaneous Suicide Squad comics. Like, there's a Rebirth Suicide Squad comic in there. Here's There's one John Ostrander uh, one. This is for this is issue 10 of John Ostrander's Suicide Squad, which I do have in one of the ones I showed earlier. And it's it's a good collection, but if you want to read the Suicide Squad in order, this I wouldn't recommend this, but it is it still has a lot of good stories in it. Okay, just set that down. Alright, and here's a very important uh, DC comic, Flashpoint, which was the start of the New 52 era of DC Comics. And I know I, I did mention it while I reviewed the movie that this was that was based on this, The Flashpoint Paradox, which I reviewed before I saw the Flash movie. I got this the same year for my birthday, a month later, and this is a fantastic story. Like, I love The Flash as a character. I really want to... I know I keep saying I want to get more comics of a certain character, but I really mean it because The Flash is one of my favorite superheroes. He has a really good story, particularly the Barry Allen one. He has a lot of really good stories. And and I know I do like Wally West as well, but, Bar but Barry, I do like his story about how he's a scientist and an investigator. And especially... I haven't finished The Flash TV show. I mean, I'm really behind it. Like... Last time I saw it, I think I just started season three, but this is a fantastic comic. I I, I don't know what else I can say about this because every DC Comics fan pretty much loves this story, and it's very interesting. You get lots of alternate characters like Batman, who's actually Thomas Wayne in his universe. Uh, you have an alternate Wonder Woman and Aquaman who are actually battling. It's It's a really interesting, cool story. Right, and this is the only New 52 comic I have, Shazam. This this is the first DC comic I actually ever got. I got this before I actually before the Shazam movie came out because I wanted to know the character a bit before I saw the movie. And it's really the movie is really has a lot of those vibes to this comic. I mean, Black Adam is in it. I mean, because obviously Black Adam wasn't in movies until his actual movie came out but it's it's really this is a really good comic and you even get lots of stories about you even get a whole story about his uh about him and his family the shazam family which that's one of the reasons i unpopular opinion i liked the second shazam more than the first one it's not just because it had more action but the family dynamic which really makes it this character really good and he Definitely, you can tell he cares for his family and loves to help them, and they all have really good chemistry. Despite them being foster children, they all feel like a family, so. This is kind of a weird one. Justice League United, Volume 1, Justice League Canada. My grandma actually got this for me, and we're, this one's interesting because Justice League United only had two volumes because it got canceled. A part of me just wants to get the second volume just to, you know, be a completionist. But it it's an interesting con. Like, obviously, you get a bunch of DC characters. Like, you got Supergirl, Adam Strange, Green Arrow, Stargirl, Animal Man, and Martian Manhunter. And this one character called Equinox, which I don't think I ever heard of until I read this comic. But it's interesting. It's a definitely a different take on Justice League with a different lineup of more younger characters kind of like young justice a bit it's it's not really like justice league international where it's a future justice league with more members it's still pretty small scale with a bunch of limited members but i do like this i mean i 
I, I would recommend it as a first Justice League comic, but it's still good. All right. Now, here's the best one. All-Star Superman. This is the first Superman comic I ever got. I got this. I was at a bookstore one day, and I was looking around, and I was like, oh, I should get this one because I, I always wanted a Superman comic. And since this one's considered so great, I just got this. And this is a fantastic story. And I did see the animated movie, I think, about a month ago, actually, because my dad was like, hey, have you seen All-Star Superman? I said, well, I've read the comic. And yeah, this is a fantastic story. It has... The artwork's very interesting. It definitely has a lot of good action, and the visuals are spectacular. It has really a really cool story that progresses within the arc. Like you even get to see this little one instance where Lois Lane is given Superman's powers for a day, and they have fun together, and it's really cool. It's it's a great Superman story. I'm. I definitely want to get more Superman. I know I I know I keep repeating that, but Superman's such a good character that this was a fantastic start to my collection. So I de of the Superman stuff. So I definitely want to get more. All right, this is the only other Superman comic I have: Superman Brainiac, which I got for Christmas. And Brainiac, aside from Dark Side. Brainiac might be my favorite Superman villain. I know. I know Lex Luthor is his main bad guy. I like Lex Luthor, but Brainiac is so cool. Like, he's really soft-spoken but intimidating. He And he really wants all the knowledge, but also using it as a really cunning way to actually destroy planets and how he can just bottle up. Because the whole thing, if you don't know, I love what I would say. I think everybody knows... A big part of Superman media is that in his Fortress of Solitude, he keeps a bottle, a bottled city of Kandor, which is, which was from Krypton, and it's a great story. I definitely recommend this one. You don't need to read anything. Like All Star Superman in this, you don't need to read anything thing to get this. So. This is Tales of the Super Pets. I actually got this after the Super Pets movie came out because this came out around the time the Super Pets movie came out. And it's interesting. I mean, the Super Pets were never a team I really cared for because admittedly when the movie was coming out, I was like, I don't know about this because the Super Pets, I didn't really care for them. But the movie was surprisingly likable. So I decided to read, get pick this up and... It's an okay collection. Most of it is just Superman related characters. Like you see Comet the Super Horse, Crypto, Beppo, Streaky the Super Cat. I mean, you do see Ace the Bat Hound, but like you don't see any of the other. I mean, I guess you. Wait, do you see? Yeah, I think you see Jumpa, Wonder Woman's Kangaroo at one point. Yeah, most of them are just Superman, Supergirl animals. So it's fun, but. I don't know. If you want to get into lots of the animal characters, I, I don't know if this is a good start. This is Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow, which I got in. I know they're adapting this into a movie, and I still don't really have much. Not a lot of comic book movies. I mean, I'm real excited for Deadpool and Wolverine, but a lot of comic book movies are just... I'm not really excited for much anymore because they want to have all the same ha ha funny tone and James Gunn style doesn't really work with this kind of story. I mean, this is a really good story though. It's it shows Supergirl on on this distant planet called Krem and she goes on this huge adventure and joins some, with some other aliens and there's lots of really cool color palettes throughout the whole thing. Like, just look at this. Like, this is spectacular, and it's a really good story. You don't see much of Supergirl on Earth. You don't actually see Supergirl on Earth, really, but it's still an amazing story. I I can definitely see why this was kind of becoming a bestseller when it came to DC Comics when it came out. And I haven't read much of Tom King's stuff, but I definitely want to after reading this. All right, and here are my only... Uh, like paperback, well, not paperback, but like, like 
comic issues ones. I don't get much issue comics because I think it's kind of pointless when you can just get a whole collection, but like, this is Black Adam issue one special edition, which I got for Christmas in 2022 in my stocking. And it's a cool comic. I mean, you don't, it's really much an introduction. You don't really get a lot of action and stuff, but it is kind of cool seeing Black Adam get his starred on earth. And it's, it's cool. I definitely want to check out more to further the story. Maybe I'll reread this if I ever get the rest. Spawn's Universe, which is a one-shot comic. Yeah, like I said, lots of them. I try to just get one-shots when it comes to paper, uh, like the issue paperbacks. Not the paperback. <laughs> you know what I mean. And I love Spawn as a character. I really want to get more of his stuff, but the problem is Spawn doesn't have like a certain volume of certain issues. Like it's still long running. It, there's so many volumes, but I might just get volume one just, you know, to add to the collection. And it's a cool story if you like Spawn and you want to see like, it's basically Spider-Verse, but for Spawn, like there's Gunslinger Spawn, there's like a Cowboy Spawn, like there's a bunch of different spots. There's King Spawn, which actually does have, this comic does lead into King Spawn, which has a two volumes, I think, which I do want to get those after reading this. But Spawn is a very cool character. I think he's really underrated because, as I said, most superheroes don't get a lot of credit unless they're Marvel or DC. But I really recommend just give other characters a chance, like especially Spawn. I hear, I know there's going to be a Spawn movie coming out soon with, I believe, Jamie Foxx. So. I really hope that does him justice and bring him into the limelight again. Alright. I know another one shot, but Batman Secret Files with Gardens. This has Poison Ivy in it, who's Poison Ivy's an interesting character. You don't really see that much stories with her in it, so it was nice to have one in my collection. So. The Savage She Hulk issue one. This is this is not an original one. This is literally a reprint of from like 2018 or 19 or so. Because look, there's literally an ad for a Black Widow comic that says April 2020. But yeah, this is a good comic. She-Hulk is an interesting character. One thing I find interesting about She-Hulk is that unlike Hulk who becomes like, you know, a, a mindless, you know, destruction machine... Jennifer Walters actually retains her human, you know, mentality throughout and she has a normal speech pattern. So that kind of makes her interesting and different from the Hulk and she only kind of just becomes slightly larger instead of like a giant buff monster. So she's cool. And no, I haven't seen the She-Hulk show, but that looked... <sighs> no, I'm not watching that, but it's it's a good comic to start with. I, I know, I once read this one... I once at a bookstore saw this one called She-Hulk, the complete or collection or ultimate collection or whatever, but I still, but I might pick that one up just to, you know, add to it. Okay. I saved the best one for last. You're really going to love this one. I was amazed when I got this. I got this last spring and I, it, I just had to get this. It was so important to my collection. Are you ready? All right, here it goes. That's right. The Brave and the Bold issue 28. The first ever appearance of the Justice League, where they fought Starro the Conqueror. And... Okay, in hindsight, this comic is not super great. Yeah, honestly, you know how people... You know how when people whine about solo movies, they... Like, like, you should have, like, 20 solo movies before you do a team-up movie. Or you should have... Characters shouldn't be introduced, introduced in the same movie. Well, guess what? The first appearance of the Just League isn't about them teaming up. Heck, apparently, even in the comics prior to this, the Justice League were never built up. They, they're just already established as a team. This is their first appearance, and... Batman and Superman aren't even in this comic because at the time they were in the World's Finest series. And so, objectively, if you want to get into the Justice League, this is not a good start. 
it's a really short story. It establishes the Justice League as an already existing team without really much prior explanation of what happened. And the writing is really dated. I mean, this was written in 1962, so, but... Okay, objectively, looking back... By modern standards, it's not a great comic, but I still respect it because if it wasn't for this, we wouldn't have had all this Justice League media, so. Okay, well, that was the last of my collection, and this video was getting pretty long anyway, so I hope you enjoyed this collection video. I've been wanting to do this for so long, and I hope I was able to recommend some stuff to you, so. Yeah, this was a fun video to make, even though it was not movie-related, I mean. Okay, I guess I did mention movies, but it's still a, this is still something, comic books are something I absolutely love, and like I said, I still want to get some non-superhero comics eventually, but the I think, for what it is, I have a pretty good collection so far. It's not like the hugest thing in the world, but it's a decent enough size, I think, so. Yeah, that was a lot of fun joining you guys, so, bye. I don't know what to say, but just see you later and happy National Superhero Day. <laughs>